Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as I discuss building three Guilos model airplanes, converting all three for radio controlled flight, and successfully flying them. We'll go over how I built the first version of the Arrow, the Guilos Lancer, and a second version of the Guilos um, Arrow. We'll discuss the lessons learned, what we could do better to help position you for success with any conversion you may be thinking of for a Guilos model airplane kit. Let's get to it. Guilo's model airplanes have been building kits since the late 1920s. They're a very popular line of kits. They're uh, free flight, rubber band powered models. <clears throat> they have contest free flyers. They have a lot of scale models. The construction method is the same for every model. If you can build one Guilo's model, you can build any. Over the years when these kits came out, obviously the rubber band free flight was a primary means of propulsion. The instructions did have the capability to put on a small gas engine, typically a 0 .020, zero .020 peewee uh, Cox engine for control line flight or single channel radio control, but not too many people did that. It was just hard to do the uh, equipment of the day. The models are smaller with the Guilos kits. Everything changed with the introduction of electric power, lithium polymer batteries, and micro-sized electronic control equipment for the servos and receiver. Today, it's really quite easy to take a Guilos kit and convert it to radio control flight. In this video, I'll give you my experiences to include flight vi of, of video of three of these aircraft that could help you position yourself for success with your conversion. The forte of the Guilos models are their scale airplane kits. There's a variety of very attractive scale models, wingspans for the initial batch under 30 inches uh, for trainers, fighters, World War I aircraft, World War II aircraft. As a general rule, when you build a model airplane, if it's a scale model, the model will fly similar flight characteristics to its full-size counterpart. If you build a model of a Piper Cub, it's probably going to fly a little bit smoother than a model of a World War II fighter, a P-51, or a Falk Wolf. In addition to the scale aircraft, the Guilos does have contest series um, kits, and a good example is the Lancer as well as the Arrow. These are not scale models. They're designed to be free flight designs with rubber powered flight. There's no need to copy a full scale design. Because these are designed for successful free flight, they make ideal candidates for RC uh, conversion. That's why I picked the Lancer and the Arrow for this. If you're looking for an initial Guilos kit to convert, one of these uh, series of uh, contest flyers is a great start for that conversion trip. For any RC model, but especially for these smaller models under 30 inch wingspan, Weight is the key to a successful airplane, light weight. And so you'll hear me continually discussing as we convert these airplanes to keep the airplanes light. Anything you can do to make these smaller models fly with less weight, and I'll give you some tips on how to do that, will be to your benefit for a successful flying aircraft. And this will be important because you'll see on my arrow conversion, I did two versions of the same airplane, same builder, same kit, same wood, everything, yet they came out about a half ounce different in weight with quite different flight characteristics. The first thing I'd like to discuss with you is the power and control system for your Guilos RC conversion, because this is going to be the heart of any successful uh, conversion. So if we look here for a second, this is a standard control and power setup for any model airplane. You have an electric motor, an electronic speed control, a receiver, and then any number of servos that actually move the control surfaces. What I do for my Guilos conversion for these three models is I use the Park Zone microelectronic equipments. Everything I showed you over there with the receivers, servos, is in this unit right here. Obviously, this is the geared electric motor to the propeller. On this little brick, which is mounted on a piece of balsa, these two devices here, the linear servos will go back and forth. The receiver is built in, the electronic speed control is built in, here's the antenna. So everything needed to fly an airplane is right here. The total weight of this is half of an ounce. And it is powered by a single cell lithium polymer battery. So this entire power control package weighs 0.6 ounces, and this is what I use for all of my Guilos airplanes conversions. So I have other videos on the um, Park Zone mini Ultra Micro Equipment. I'll put a card up here, so if you want to look at that, please, um, you can see more detail of the system. 
What we'll do is we'll power the system once. I'll just show you how it works, and then we'll discuss putting it into the aircraft. Remember, it's very important with these um, park zone systems, if you connect the battery to the system with the transmitter off, it'll go into the bind mode. So it's very important to turn this transmitter on first. Make sure you have the selected model. And we do. And then all you need to do, make sure the throttle is low. We observe the polarity. Connect the battery. We have a steady light. And watch the little servo arms moving there. Elevator up, down, and rudder left, right. And then for the motor, everything works fine. So again, these park zone systems are so crucial to the flight, the way I convert the Aguilos RC aircraft, I literally design the aircraft around this power system. And this is where lightness comes in. Rules of thumb for success with the park zone equipment with the thrust is a wingspan of under 30 inches and a weight under three ounces. If you can keep it less than that for the weight, you should have a pretty good RC flying model with your Guidos conversion. Now, I've talked about the advantages of the uh, Park Zone Ultra Micro equipment, and there, there are significant advantages. You can go on YouTube, other places, and see other Guidos conversions with heavier RC equipment, actual servos, uh, different size motors, etc., larger batteries included. You can do that. Again, it's just a decision that you have to make with the increased weight. With these smaller models, a small increase of rate of weight can have a significant impact on the handling characteristics of the model. If you can keep the weight down, stick with the park zone system, it's a great step towards success with your RC conversion. So the first one I'd like to talk about is the um, Lancer from Guilo's models. Let's take a look now and see how the Lancer flies. So let's go into a little bit more detail on the Guilo Lancer. Uh, this is my first uh, Guilo's conversion. The weight of the Lancer comes in at 1.8 ounces. That's with the battery. This is well under the um, three ounce limit that I have set my, for myself with the Park Zone equipment. Now, the wingspan is 24 inches. It's a lesser wingspan. It's a fairly thin wing, but because it weighs 1.8 ounces, everything flies uh, well. It handles very well. Notice the building in lightness. First of all, what are you going to cover it with? You can cover it with tissue if you want to do that. I use iron-on coverings. The lightest iron-on coverings you can get are the light series of coverings, but make sure that they're transparent. Those are just less density and weight than the full um, iron-on coverings. I found uh, full color coverings, as I found out by Arrow models. I have transparent blue, transparent yellow on the wings. It's the lightest covering you can get. Notice also when you look at the wing, there's literally two spars of 1 16th inch balsa on the top. There's nothing on the bottom. That's how small a light the wing structure is. And notice just two ribs along here with good spacing to keep the light weight. So again, a light weight works fine with this model. All of the Guilo's conversions, you're going to have to have some reinforcement on the nose of solid uh, balsa. This is 1 16th inch balsa. That's necessary for the landing gear and the motor mount. You can stop back here, just have regular structure for the back of the airplane. Wheels can add weight. These little plastic wheels that I got from somewhere are as light as you can get. I highly recommend those. The motor is standard. Notice that this fuselage is so narrow that I had to put in the electronics sideways against the fuselage wall. Nothing wrong with that. It's not straight across this way, just part of the design considerations with a smaller model. Also, the weight and balance worked out just fine the way it is. I even had to add a little dime for a little bit of tail weight. Again, this model just built uh, right. One thing that you'll see from me is the um, airfoil-shaped lifting tail surfaces. Notice that there is an airfoil shape on the stabilizer and the rudder. This is uh, advantageous for free flight aircraft. If I were to do this again, I'd just use one six, uh, 3 32nd inch balsa. Just keep the whole thing flat. You don't need the lifting stab and elevator 
for the um, radio controlled version. So again, a very successful flying model. The weight is the key, but the design is one of the contest series of free flight models. It just, the designers were able to do whatever they needed to um, make this fly well. It's just a very pleasing fly um, RC aircraft. Matter of fact, I, there's one YouTube video of a guy that took this and enlarged it by 200% at a very nice flying model. The second model we'll discuss on the Guilos conversion is the Guilos Arrow. This is my first version of the Arrow. Let's take a look now and see how this Arrow flies. As you can see, the arrow flies very well. This, this is a good flying model airplane. The weight of this airplane came out at 2.4 ounces. Again, we're getting closer to the three um, ounce max weight that I've set for myself, but this is a larger wing. It's a 28 inch wingspan. And if you compare it to the Lancer, you can see the difference in the wing. So this is a bigger wing. It can accept a little bit more weight because of the larger wing. Again, similar considerations that I mentioned. I have the airfoil shaped uh, tail. This adds a lot of weight to it. I will have a flat one next time. Also, I use transparent iron on covering for the fuselage. Very lightweight, goes on well. This is a solid color onto the wing. It adds weight. It probably added half an ounce of the weight just because of the higher uh, weight of the full uh, color transparency. If I were to do this again, I would use a transparent color to save weight. Notice this again is one of the contest flyers, a nice long nose moment, nice long tail moment. Because of the added weight to the tail, you can see if you look closely underneath the motor, I had to glue in two washers for nose weight. Again, if the tail was a uh, lesser weight, I would not have needed that um, nose weight. Also, I could put in the controls uh, flat straight across but because I need a nose weight instead of having the battery located back here I should have located the battery closer to the motor just moving the weight forward for center gravity purposes these wheels look nice they don't weigh that much so I can accept that and um, that's really it for this airplane I, I, I'm very pleased with the way it flies again it's a larger wing 28 inch wingspan a, a thicker cord but it handles just fine. The park zone motor provides tons of power for this for ground takeoffs, uh, cruising at half throttle. Very happy with this um, rendition of a Guilos RC conversion. This is my second version of the uh, build of the Guilos Arrow Kit. Let's take a look and see how this one flies. This is my second build of the Arrow. I liked my first Arrow so much, I wanted to build a second one and just include some incorporate, um, some design changes to make it look a little bit more appealing. I decided to glue the wing on. I had some fairings to the front of the wing and the back to where it goes into the fuselage. And just pay a little bit more attention to some silver covering up front out of that nature. Again, I ran into weight problem. The weight of this Arrow is 2.9 ounces. Same kit, same builder, and I have an extra half ounce of weight on the model. I will tell you in all honesty, you can see from how it flew, it does not fly as well as the first arrow. It's just heavy. That last half of ounce makes a difference. The plane flies okay, it handles well, but it just needs more power. I'm limited by the park zone system to what I have with that. One thing that I do want to mention for anybody using the park zone system, these batteries are very easy to use. I charge them with a USB charger on my computer. The batteries do age. Make sure you have a couple batteries. Make sure they're fully charged. If you have an older battery that's not quite holding the same charge, 
can make a difference on the motors just so you have as much power as possible. The other thing is I used a different type of lightweight covering material on the yellow for the wing and the tail. It's heavier. Because this is heavier in the tail, I had to add literally four washers of nose weight here to make the thing balance out, even putting the battery into the nose. This is just not what you should be doing. Um, if this was my only arrow flying, I would literally put on another tail section with uh, just a flat section of 336 inch balsa. Um, transparent covering, that would have added a lot of weight. I would have recovered the wing with transparent covering to save weight, and I could have gotten rid of some of the nose weight, and I think it would have improved the flying characteristics uh, quite a bit. So that's really all I have to say on this. Again, the learning point is the same model, same builder, came out uh, a half ounce uh, greater, it said about 2.9, 2.4 ounces. That made the difference on the flying. So just if your Guilo's plane doesn't fly right, doesn't necessarily you made a mistake with the design or whatever. It's just anything you do to decrease the weight, build in lightness as the expression goes when you build it, will help you succeed with your RC modeler. Again, thank you for joining me in this video. The Guilo's kits are a lot of fun to build. If you do it right, they fly quite well. Again, build in lightness. I really like the park zone line of uh, control and power, but the guidelines are for that is to keep the weight under three ounces, the wingspan under 30 inches, and just build in light, lightness. Every step of the way, anything you do to replace balsa wood, use lighter weight coverings, false ribs for, for the wing ribs, um, anything to build in lightness, you'll have a better flying airplane. I enjoy the balsa, uh, the Guilos kits. They fly great, and I wish you all the best with your conversion of a Guilos kit to radio control flight.